what is up guys? It's your boy, it's your homie, it's the cool kid from downstreet fire here from awesome2s.com back at it again with another tutorial. This time a cool 2D game that I call Gold Miner. Basically the goal of the game is to pick up these items with this hook. It will be spinning left and right so we will see that in a second and even though it will look like a small game we will learn a lot. I mean when did you not learn a lot with me, you know? So uh, yeah, let's take a look at the game that we are gonna create. So I'm gonna hit the play button. We will hear the background music. Now I did lower a volume a little bit, a volume, the volume a little bit, so that we, you know, are not interrupted. And pay attention now, you see, the hook is moving left and right and we need to, you know, release it at the point where we think it, will, it can grab something. So uh, yeah, and all of these items, have score on them so when we grab one of these they will have a certain amount of score that will increase and these stones will give us negative score as you will see right now so we are carrying this core and i'm gonna go into the negative side yeah thank you very much for that so i cannot reach my end of the level so when i get the gold now i will get more score and when we reach 100 score we win the level or when our timer reaches zero we also are gonna die and restart the level. Pay attention now when we get to 10. You hear? So when we get to countdown 10 and lower, we, you see, hear this countdown timer. But now when it gets to zero, it will end the game and it will restart it right now. Bam, the game is restarted. So let me try to actually win the game. So uh, yeah, I can get this item. So come on, let's try to get, yeah. I'm not gonna win the game because it will take a little bit of time. We want to jump in and create the game. Then you can play it and love it and whatever you do with the game. Smash that like button. Smash the subscribe button. <laughs> I have so much fun creating these tutorials. Anyways, let us get into the creation thing of this game. By the way, download the assets and the complete project. Link will be in the description below. And uh, yeah. Let's get started. Smash the like button. I am in a new project and this is a 2D project and I named it Gold Miner 2D. I mean, it's pretty clever and obvious. What can I say? Anyways, you're going to do the same. And after that, we are, of course, going to import the assets. So open the folder for the assets, which by the way, you can download. Link will be in the description below. So you will have the assets and you will have the complete project. Just go to my website sign up and the assets will come on your email anyways this is what you have in the assets so you have the fonts sounds and the sprites and we're going to select all three of these and simply drag and drop them right here in our unity editor and while we are waiting for unity to import smash that like button and hit that subscribe button so moving forward the first thing that we're going to do in our game is prepare the backgrounds so we're gonna go into the sprites folder and here we have the background folder. So we are going to click on that and we're going to import this BG1. So simply drag and drop it here and bam, this is our BG1. Now, of course, as you can see, this image is a little bit small in comparison to the camera and what the camera sees because all this blue thing that you see here is our screen. So this is what we will see in our game. So what I'm gonna do is take the BG1 and set the scale X at 2.25 and the scale Y will be at two and voila, simple as that. Now I'm also going to set the Y axis at negative 1.5 and this is, so negative 1.5 is actually for the position, not for the scale because the scale Y is set at 2 and scale X is at 2.25. So now we have our first element and now we can add our second which is the BG itself or this one with BG so drag and drop it right here as a child of BG1 and by the way our BG1 we are going to set here the order in layer at 2. Now, if you don't know what this order in layer is, basically, pay attention here. If I take the BG, it's at order in layer zero. And BG1 is order in layer two. If I set the BG at order in layer three, bam, you see it is rendered in front of our BG1. So the game object that actually has a higher order in layer number 
will be rendered on top of the game object that has a lower value. And we are also going to set the scale because if you see here, our BG1, we changed the scale. So now we imported this BG and the scale for it is messed up. So we're going to set the scale one for X and one for the Y. And I'm going to set this BG at order in layer zero because we want it to be rendered behind our BG one. And we're also going to set it at 1.8, okay, for the Y axis. So now we have it in the background representing like, let's say the sky. So moving forward, what is the next thing that we're going to add? Let's go here. We have these elements and we have these layers and we have these layers. So what I'm going to do is go here in these elements and select all of these elements, layer one and layer three, and set the sprite mode to multiple and hit apply. Because now I can go and select the elements and since the sprite mode is set to multiple, I can go into the sprite editor and I can slice every single one of these. So I'm gonna click here, I'm going to click slice and bam. So I have this right here, let me just, actually it's okay, this right here, this here. So we need to do this a little bit on our own. So I'm going to change this and uh, this will be something like, yeah, this is okay. For this one, and I'm going to name this one Stone 1, so I'm going to say Stone 1. And for this one here, simply draw it, so draw a new one. And when I say draw it, we are simply going to move our left mouse button, or actually press the left mouse button and then move the mouse to create this rectangle around this Stone 2. So I'm going to name this one Stone 2. And this is going to be our stone three. So simply click on it. And this one is stone three. And this one is stone four. So stone four, voila. Now here, this is going to be our wood. So I'm going to say here, wood one. And this right here, actually we need to slice this. So here I'm going to move it up to this point and like this, voila, just a little bit down. Why is this playing with me? So just a little bit down and voila. And this is going to be wood too. And by the way, your assignment is to slice these other two and I'm going to hit apply. And now we can use these in our game. But before I actually do that, we are also going to slice other pieces. So let's go in layer one and it's set to multiple, click on Splite Editor, and I'm going to slice this, so click Slice, and voila, so we have this right here, maybe change it or move it up to here, because this is also a part of it, you see? And let me just select it, something like this. I'm going to name this one Tree, so I'm going to say Tree 1, and we have this one right here, which is going to be our Tree 2, so I'm going to say Tree, Two, voila, we're good to go. Now we have this right here. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not gonna rename it. I'm simply gonna hit apply and move on to the layer three and go here and sprite editor. So we are also going to slice this one. So click here, slice and slice. So we have this and oh, I don't want it like this. So delete this one and select this and move it up to here and voila. And let me select this one. Yeah, this is totally fine. And I'm going to rename this one to large tree. So large tree one. And this one is going to be large tree two. And I'm going to hit apply. And these changes will be applied to the prefab. So now I'm going to go here in layer one and take these elements. So we have this right here. We have tree one and tree two. So I'm going to drag and drop here, tree one, and I'm going to drag and drop tree two. So come on, where is my tree two? Okay, select our tree one, and order in layer will be set to one. And we're going to set the scale at one and one for X and Y. Let me just set it here at zero for the Y as well. So I'm going to move it on the Y axis, something like this but where am I going to put it? Let's go somewhere around here, I believe. Yeah, 
this looks fine. So I want this tree one to be here and tree two. So select the tree two and we are going to set the order in layer at one scale one for Y and X and set the Y position at zero. So now I'm going to position it a little bit here, something like this and move it over here, actually replace the two. So this one will go here and tree two will go here because tree two comes from our right side. So something like this, voila. So tree two will be at 3.5 for the X and one for the Y and order in layer will be one and scale X and Y will be set at one as well. And here for our tree one, I'm going to set it at negative 2.4 for the X and the Y will be 0.9 and scale X and Y will be one and order in layer will be one. Oh now let me just take the camera and set here the size to 4.5, voila. So changing the size of the camera from five to 4.5 and voila. So I'm going to take this sun and I named it sun for some reason, but actually this is going to be our moon. So let me just take it here, BG. And I'm going to set this. So let me select it. I'm going to say moon order in layer one, X and Y will be one. And let me just move it here. Actually, no, X and Y will not be one. So let me just say 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Yeah, this is okay. And I'm going to name or actually name it. I'm going to move it here. And by the way, so tree, we have tree one, which is here. Yeah. Tree one will be order in layer two. So now our moon is rendered behind our tree. As you can see, if you pay attention at the top left corner, you will see right here and I'm zooming like you're blind. Of course you see it's here at the top left corner. Anyways, this is our moon. So what is the next thing that we're going to add? Let's add a stone. So go here into our elements. So we have our stone. Let me just take, for example, I don't know, stone two, and I'm going to put it here. Let me set the Y at zero. X and Y scale will be one, one. And the order in layer will be one or actually, let me say four. Yeah, exactly. Or actually three because the BG one is at two and stone two will be positioned on top of it. So something like this will do. Yeah, this is totally fine. So let me just go here, actually here. And let me just see if I put it one. No, three is exactly what I want. So you see here, we are going to set the stone to at three or actually move the stone to just a little bit here, something like this, because we're going to take a wood, which is this one, wood one, and put it here in the BG. So put it here. And actually I'm putting all of these as children of this BG. Well, it doesn't matter. We can put them like that, or we can, let me just put it like this. It's the same thing because they all are going to be children of the BG one, which is the most important thing. So take wood one and set the Y axis at zero. And scale will be one, one in order in layer. So where's actually my wood? Let me just go here in the scene. Okay. It's here. So let me take it and position it here. Something like this. So this is where the wood is going to be now for this wood. Yeah. I'm going to leave it at order in layer two. Actually it can be, yeah order in layer one and two can do because BG is at two and this BG is at zero. Yeah, exactly. So this is, and maybe just move the stone a little bit, something like this. Our player will be in the middle and uh, voila, this is our level. Of course you can play with these elements, rearrange them however you want to rearrange. Because if I go here in the scene, you see this stone right here is part of the BG. So this right here is part of it, but this one is added. So you can play with it. So you can play and we can add different elements we already have here. So you have different elements here and on the layer and on the layer three as well. So you can take, I don't know, let's say for example, one of the large trees and you can also put it here. Let me just move it. Do we see it? No. Let me set the order in layer one. 
size one, something like this. So you can do this as well and go here, voila, you see? So you can play with this to create cool looking effects, cool backgrounds, cool 2D level. And I encourage you to do that. The more you practice, the better you will be. Moving forward, let's add the player in our game. For that, we need to go back into the sprites folder and in player folder. So this is his cheer animation. We have the rope folder. Go inside, we have all of these animations from zero up to 11. Now I'm going to take first one, so zero, and drag and drop it here inside of the scene. First of all, I'm going to rename this one to player and set the order in layer at three. So our player is rendered here. We can see him, but he is very small. So we want to make him larger. And for that, what I'm gonna do is set the scale X at two and scale Y at two. And of course now move the player up. So move him somewhere around here, I believe. Yeah, this can do, so two point, let's say 26. Let me just go here in the scene and see how that lines up. Yeah, this lines up perfectly. Maybe just a little bit up. Yeah, this can this can work, yeah. I like it where the player is right now. So this is where the player is going to be. Now we're also going to add our player hook in the player, but before we do that, let's actually animate the player. So we're going to take this one and click here, add component, and we're going to add the animator component and let's go quickly here into the assets and right click and create a folder. And this is going to be animations folder. And since we're only going to have the player animation, we are, well, there is no need to create any more folders there to organize the project. So what I'm gonna do in the animations is right click and create an animator controller. And this one is going to be our player controller. Select the player and attach it inside of his animator controller. So drag and drop it, voila. And I am going to take this animation tab and put it right here. If you don't have it, it's under window and animation and animation. So simply drag it there. So now what I can do is go here and click on this create button. And first of all, I'm going to create the idle animation and click here to create a new animation. So click here where it says idle at the top left corner because we have well, top left corner because I set the animation tab to be above, but it's right here. You see where it says animation. So you're gonna click here on the idle, create a new clip. We did this already, so I expect you to know this. And here you are going to type wrap or rope wrap. So rope wrap, voila. And click there one more time and create a new clip. And this one is going to be cheer and voila, and hit enter. So now we have all of these animations. So we have the cheer, idle, and rope wrap. Let's go here inside of the sprites, player, and rope. And for the idle, we're going to set zero. So simply this one, zero, that is the idle animation. For our rope wrap animation, select all of these from zero to 11 and simply put them right here. And for our cheer, we're gonna go back one folder and set the cheer and voila, we are good to go. So now if I were to preview the cheer, you see he is cheering. You see, this is his cheer animation. This is the rope wrap animation. You see, voila, this is how he is wrapping the rope. I know it looks weird, but hey, don't have any, any, well, I'm gonna leave it at that. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, moving forward, what is the next thing to do? Basically, our player is done. We don't need to put anything on him in terms of box colliders and whatnot because the magic happens here on the hook. But what we can do is go here and right click and create a new folder for prefabs just so that we don't mess things up. And we can go here, create a folder for player prefabs and simply drag and drop the player. What did I do? Drag and drop the player in the player prefabs folder so that we can save him as a prefab. Moving forward, let us add the hook for the player. So select the player here and right click and we are going to create an empty game object. Now this game object is going to be our player hook parent. So I'm going to say player hook parent 
and we're also going to have a sprite render on him. So here I'm going to say sprite render. Now the reason why I did not add the sprite because what I'm going to do is go here in sprites and assets or actually assets and sprites and elements and hook. And here we have the rope texture. I'm going to duplicate that and simply rename it to rope and go and set the sprite mode to multiple and hit apply so that we can slice it and open the sprite editor and simply click slice here. And what I'm going to do is change it. So move this a little bit here, maybe something like this. Actually, I'm going to move it also a little bit here. I think this will do. And yeah, exactly this right here. So you can set the X position 943. Y position 724, width and height as you can see, and you can slice it like this. So click apply. And why did I do it? Well, now we can take this and use it in our game. I was lazy to have an asset for this, but basically this is something simple that you can create right off the bat. So here I'm going to set the order in layer for this one at two. Actually, should I set it at three? Yeah, something like this. And set the scale, let's say 0.1 and point one. Yeah, this is what we need. Exactly this. So let me just take it and put it right here. Something like this. This is where our player hook is going to be. So let's say here negative 0 0.127. And the Y is going to be negative 0 0.21 and 9. Yeah, this is where I'm going to put it. So let me just go here and maybe just change the size just a little bit more. So maybe the width a little bit more. So 0 0.7 and the height, something like this. Yeah, 0 0.07 and 0 0.07. Voila, this is going to be our hook parent. And now we are also going to have a hook that is attached on this parent. And for the hook, let's go here. We have these claws or actually they are the hook. So what I'm going to do is set the sprite mode to multiple, hit the apply button and go here under sprite editor and slice these. So click here to slice and I'm going to take this one. So I'm going to call it hook and I'm going to hit apply so that these changes are applied to the prefab. And let me just go here and take the hook. You can use whatever or whichever you want, but I'm going to take this one and let me just set here. So this hook, we are going to set the scale. First of all, let me just reposition it and see where it is. And the order in layer is going to be four so that it is visible, voila. And simply change it something like this. I think this is okay. So let me just move it a little bit down so that I can see where I'm actually going to put it because we need to make it appear like it's attached on it. So you get my point if I, uh, well, I cannot clear the player. I just wanted to show you that. But basically, let me just set here, copy component. And if I change it here, you see, we want to do what? We want to make this hook appear like it's attached on this. You see, something like this. Voila, this is what we want. So let me just move it back and take the hook and set it something like this. Voila, this is what we want. So this is going to be our player and the hook. And let me just go here and overrides and hit apply all. Now the player hook parent is going to have the sprite render, which we already have. I'm also going to attach a line render on him. So line render. Now don't worry about that. First of all, I'm going to disable it. We will cover this a little bit later. Don't worry. And this is what we are going to put on the player hook. As far as this is the hook parent, excuse me, and the player hook or the hook simply, let me just change this name, player hook is actually hook parent and the hook. And on the hook itself, we are going to attach a circle collider. So let me just type here circle collider 2D. Of course, we are going to make it a little bit smaller. So the radius of it is going to be, let's say 0.2. This is the radius and the offset it's going to be negative 0 0.1. Yeah, this is cool. Let me just maybe move the X a little bit. Maybe move X negative 0 0.1, actually negative 0. Uh, let's say 0 0.2. 
actually zero one. Yeah, this is okay. So for the circle collider 2D, offset X will be negative 0 0.01 and offset Y negative 0 0.1. Radius will be 0 0.2 and we are also going to attach a rigid body. So a rigid body 2D. We are going to make it as kinematic and voila, that is that. Also for our player hook or actually player circle collider, set it to be a trigger and yeah, that is basically that. So this is what we need in terms of our components and set the constraint to Z. So freeze the Z rotation for the component. And let me just go here on the player parent overrides and hit apply all. So what is the next step to do? Well, the next step is to actually start moving the hook. And for that, we are going to create our scripts. And let me just go here and see how that looks in the game. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. This is what we want. This is exactly. So let's go here and right click in our assets and create the scripts folder. Inside of the scripts folder, I'm going to create a new folder for hook scripts. And let's go in the hook scripts, right click and C sharp script. So the first script that we are going to create is going to be our hook movement. So hook movement script or actually simply hook movement and attach it on the hook parent. So go here, hook parent, come on and attach it. Let me quickly go for the player overrides all and apply so that this change is applied to the prefab. And of course, open it in Visual Studio or Mono Behavior or actually Mono Develop or Notepad or I don't know what you're using to write your code. So open it there. And let me just give a little bit of space, you know, my procedure. So what do we need? First of all, we need a public float minimum Z, which is going to be equal to negative five, five and maximum Z, which is going to be equal to positive five, five. What is this? If you've been following one of my previous tutorials and I hopefully have published these tutorials <laughs> before this one, because sometimes I upload tutorials, you know, like I already have five tutorials uploaded and I upload this one, but I publish this one first. So by the way, smash like and hit subscribe. Anyways, <laughs> what are these? This is up to where our hook parent can move. What does that mean? That means this, if I take him because you know, it's going to move like this, this is up to where it can go on the, actually this is up to where it can go on the rotate speed for the Z. So excuse me, this is not what I wanted to explain, but this one, you see, we are rotating like this, you see, left and right, left and right. So up to five, five, it can go like this and up to negative five, five, it can go like this. So this is basically the rotation and I, <laughs> Minimum Z and maximum Z. This is for rotation. So rotation Z. And I explained something different. <laughs> Anyways, you're going to forgive me. So moving forward, what is the next thing to do? The next is to have a public float rotate speed, which is equal to 5F. And we also need to have a private float. So private float rotate angle. We also need to have a private bool rotate underscore right something like this and private bool can rotate to determine if we can rotate or not so as you can see these are all variables that we are going to use to rotate our hook don't worry about that we will cover this in a moment so we will see everything how that goes the next thing to do or add more variables is a public float move speed which I'm going to set is equal to three by default. We can always change it in the inspector. It's set to be public. We also need a private float initial move speed because we, depending on the item that we pick up, because we're going to have larger gold items and smaller, when we pick up a larger one, then when the player plays that pull animation, he's going to pull a larger item slowly. So we will see that. Don't worry, we're going to have pretty or a lot of cool features here. So the next thing to have is a public float minimum Y, which is going to be equal to negative 2.5 F. Now this is the thing I was talking about a moment ago. So this is that. So if I take the hook parent up to where it can go. So negative 2.5 is the maximum where it can go. So somewhere around here, you see, see where the hook is somewhere around there. This is the maximum where it 
can go. So negative 2.5. The next thing that we're going to have is a private float initial underscore y and a private bool. So private bool move down to determine if we are moving down or not. Now here we will have another script. This is for our four line renderer. So we will create here a private variable. So private rope renderer, which I'm going to call rope renderer and renderer is a weird word to pronounce renderer. Anyways, we will get this later. So don't worry about that inside of the start function. So let's move this here in the start function. I'm going to say initial Y is going to be equal to transformation or transform that position that well, well, transformation. I don't believe I ever said that in any one of my tutorials. So initial Y transform position Y initial move speed. So initial move speed is going to be equal to move speed and can rotate is going to be equal to true to allow us to rotate. And that is the first thing that we are going to do. So inside of here, inside of the update, we're going to call a function that I'm going to call rotate and below we're going to create void rotate. First of all, inside of this function, we are going to prevent it to execute if we cannot rotate. So if underscore or actually exclamation mark can rotate, we are going to say return. What is this right here? We know so can rotate. We know that that exclamation mark makes what's after it the opposite. So if can rotate is false, it will make it the opposite. What's opposite of false? It is true. So it will make it true and this will be true and we will hit return and the code below will not execute. So essentially here we are asking if we cannot rotate, then return exit the function. We are not going to rotate and execute the code below because here we're going to say if rotate right. So if we should suppose to rotate to the right side, we're going to say rotate angle plus equals to rotate speed multiplied with time dot delta time to make it smooth else here. So if it's a rotate to the left side, we are going to say rotate angle minus equals the rotate speed multiplied with the delta time. And below we are going to say transform that rotation is going to be equal to quaternion angle axis. And this is going to rotate around an angle. So you see, we are going to provide here float and a vector three. So the float is going to be a rotate angle by which degrees we're going to rotate. And the vector three is the axis. And that is going to be vector three forward and vector three forward is a shortcut for writing zero zero one, which means Z axis. So forward, Vector three forward is the Z axis, which means it will rotate this rotation by this degrees on the Z axis. And below we are going to say if our rotate angle is greater or equal to maximum Z. So the maximum Z rotation, then we're going to say rotate right is now equal to false. And here below else if our rotate, so rotate angle is less than or equal to minimum Z, then we are going to do the opposite. We're going to say rotate angle is now, or actually, excuse me, rotate the right. So rotate right is now equal to true. And basically this is everything we need to do in order to start rotating. So let's go here and test that out so we can test it out right away. And if I hit the play button, you will see now that the hook will rotate. You see it is rotating, but it is rotating very slowly. So we need to set the rotation speed to a higher value. So let me quickly go here, clear the console. For some reason, I like to clear the console. So the rotate speed is let's set it at 50 and let's try it out now. So let's go here and you see now, voila, you see how it is rotating. I don't know why I'm saying in the you know last couple of tutorials, I'm saying voila for some reason. Anyways, you see how it is rotating. It's rotating left and right, left and right. And this is what I was talking about. If we pay attention, select the hook parent, you will see that when the value gets to lower of negative Z or minimum Z or greater than the maximum Z, it starts rotating in the opposite direction because you see here we are testing that. 
So if the angle, and let me just make it more readable by adding enter here. So if we can rotate, basically, if we cannot rotate, return, exit out of the function, don't execute the code right here. But if we can rotate, so if this right here passes the inspection, rotate right, that means take the rotate angle and add to it plus e equals the rotate speed multiplied with the delta time, which is rotating to the right side. Else, if we are supposed to rotate to the left side, then we're going to say minus equals a rotate speed multiplied with time that delta time, move it to the left side. Transform rotation will be equal to quaternion angle axis. Angle axis will rotate around around the axis by this degrees and this is the axis. So forward means Z. If we were to say left, that means on the well, X axis. If we were to say right, that's also, well, yeah, X axis. If we were to say up, that's Y axis. So forward is the Z axis because again, it's a shortcut for writing vector three, zero, zero, one. And going here, if the rotate angle, which is this one, that we are using to rotate around the axis, if it gets at the value that is greater or equal to the maximum Z, start rotating to the opposite or the left side. Else, if the rotate angle gets to the value where it's lower or equal to the minimum Z, again, rotate to the opposite or in this case, the right side. Voila, simple as that. So moving forward, what is the next thing to do? The next thing to do is to get the input. So void get input. And in here, we are simply going to say if input dot get mouse button down zero. Now this can work on mobile as well. So this right here is basically a mobile game because this can work on mobile get input. This will get input when you click your mouse button, the left mouse button that is, or if you press on the screen as well. And here I'm going to say if can rotate, which means we are able to rotate, then we're going to say can rotate is equal to false, move down is equal to true. We will see in a moment why we're doing it like this. So now we're going to call it right here, get input. This is where we're going to get the input. And the last function that we are going to take or create is the move rope. So below here, get input, we're going to say move a rope like this. And below our get input, we are going to create it. So we're going to say void move rope like this. And I'm going to say move rope. Voila. So what can we do or what are we going to do? First of all, in our move rope, we need to make sure that it does not get executed if certain conditions are not applied because we are calling it in the update function, same as the rotate. So if the can rotate is not equal to true, which the exclamation mark here will make it false so that we hit here return and don't start rotating, we need to have some, you know, like constraints like this one right here. Well, we're going to have the same thing here in our move rope. So if we can rotate, we're going to say return. If we are rotating the hook left and right, we are not able to move it up and down. Only when we stop rotating it. So when we get the input, we are going to stop rotating it and start moving it down. We will see that in a moment. Don't worry about that. So if we cannot rotate it, so here I'm going to say if exclamation mark cannot rotate it, we are going to do what? First of all, we are going to call our sound manager to play. So sound manager instance, and we're going to say rope stretch. And we're going to say here, true. We will cover this later. Don't worry about that. I'm just putting it here as a reference so that we don't forget it later. Now here, I'm going to say vector three temporary position, which is going to be equal to transform position, which is the current position of the hook parent. Now, if we are supposed to move down, so if move down, then what are we going to do? We're going to say temp dot y minus equals, and we're going to say transform dot up multiplied with time dot delta time multiplied with move speed. We will see in a moment why we are doing it like this. Actually, not temp y, excuse me. So simply temp and transform up 
will subtract from the y-axis. We will see in a moment in action. Else, if we are not supposed to move down, so if move down is not true, we're gonna do the same exact thing, except here we're gonna say plus. So temp plus equals transform up, multiplied with time dot delta time, multiplied with the move speed. Now this all happens in the if can rotate. So here, let me just say can if cannot rotate, excuse me, rotate. So here we are gonna say transform that position is now equal to temp, which is this one right here. So we are moving downwards, but we also need to do this. We need to test if our temp dot y is less than or equal to, so if it's less than or equal to minimum y, so if it's less than or equal to minimum y, that means we reached the bottom. So the last point going down where we can go. So that's why we are going to say move down is now equal to false, which this right here, it will make it execute because now we are going to start moving up. Now, the next thing that we need to check, this is because this check here is because we don't go you know, down up to the point where we are not supposed to go down, like here, for example, we can go up to here. So let me take the hook up to here, for example, actually hook parent up to here, for example. Now, when we start moving up, we also don't want to go upwards here. So that's why we need to perform another check. And we will preview all of this after we finish typing the code. So we're going to say if our temp dot y is greater or equal to the initial y. So this is the first initial y position that we had. Now, if this, if we reach this position, then we're going to say can rotate is equal to true. So we're going to continue rotate. We will deactivate our line render. So we're going to say deactivate line render. We will do this later. Don't worry. Also here, we're going to reset. So reset move speed. So what I'm going to do here below is I'm going to say move speed is equal to initial move speed. And we're going to turn off the sound manager. So we're going to say here sound manager dot instance dot rope stretch false. We will cover this later on. Don't worry about that. Now, again, this all happens inside of cannot rotate. So right here below, we are also going to call our rope render dot render line temp and we're going to say here true we will cover this later on do not worry about that now make sure that you're calling all three of these functions inside of the update so that we can test it out and now you will see this in action we will break down the code even further so i am going to hit the play button now so pay attention you see our hook is rotating. I can now click anywhere on the screen. If I click, you see the hook is going up to down and it is going back again. You see it is going up to the point and voila, it is going back. What is happening? Is this magic teacher? Are you a magician? No, I'm not, but hit the subscribe button and hit the notification button. And let's go here. What is happening? So first of all, we are getting the input. You saw that when I click the mouse button, the hook started moving down. That happened when I click here. Now, when we click and if we can rotate, if we are in the state where we are rotating, we're going to say rotate now is false, which means this right here will not get executed. So this code actually, because now false, you see, can rotate is false. The exclamation mark will make it the opposite, which is true, which means this right here will get executed, return will be executed, and the code below will not get executed. Again, if you are new to here, let me just take the highlight tool. If you are new to this channel and this is the first tutorial you're watching, when we hit return in a void function, that means we will exit out of that function. The code that is below the return statement will not get executed. So this is what we are doing. And we make sure with this variable right here, we set it here to false, this executes and the code below will not execute. Now we are going to say move down. Okay. So let's go here in the move rope. If we can rotate, we will say return, which is this right here. So basically if we can rotate, we are rotating left and right. And if rotate is true, 
that means we are gonna hit return here and the code below will not execute because that will mean that our hook will also rotate and it will also move down which is not something that we want but there is one catch here that I hope that you will figure it out and it has to do with first couple of lines of code so if you get it please come back in the Facebook group and let me know. Anyways, this code works as you already saw. So if I go back here and test it out, so if I hit the play button one more time, and if I, you see, click, the hook moves and moves back, but now let us explain what that is. So as you can see, if we cannot rotate, which we set here, can rotate is false. Again, pay attention to the exclamation mark. It means it will make what's after the opposite. So Essentially here we're asking if we cannot rotate then we are going to start moving the hook down because that is the prerequisite that is the condition to move the hook down for the hook so the hook needs to start stop rotating okay so the hook is not rotating let's move it down get the current position of the hook so using the temporary variable transform position if we should supposed to move down we are saying temp minus equals transform up multiplied with time dot delta time multiplied with move speed why am i not doing this why am i not doing temp dot y minus equals time dot delta time multiplied with the so multiplied with the move speed actually not move down but move speed why am i not doing it like this and here why am i not doing it like this simply saying here plus so what is the issue you know me I like to show you things visually so instead of me explaining let me show you so let's go here and if I hit the play button pay attention what's gonna happen so let's say you see our hook is rotating if I press now the button you see it's you see it's rotated but it goes down and if I press again you see it is rotated it's it is supposed to go to the direction where it is rotating so for example you see now the hook is rotating here which means you see where it's rotating and let me just take the pencil. It's supposed to go in this direction, not go down and up. This is not what we want. So because of that, we need to do it like this. This is the way to go. You see here, we're only moving it on the Y axis, which is not working as you see. We need to move it as well on other axis, which is the X axis as well. So essentially we are using transform up, multiply with time dot delta time, multiply with the move speed, which means it will move it based on the up axis. So if our rotation is pointing in this direction and we are using up, so it will move it in this direction. If the rotation is pointing in this direction, it will move it in this direction, so on and so forth. You get my point. So if we should move down, we are saying temp minus equals transform up, which means move it using the Y axis in the direction where it is looking, multiply with time dot delta time and move speed to smooth things out. Else, if we are not supposed to move down, that means we are moving up, do the same thing, but the opposite, plus equals instead of minus equals, the same exact thing. Then reassign the temporary position to the transform position, which is the new. So we now have the new position that we calculated here. Reassign it back to the transform position. Okay, now we need to make sure that our hook does not go down. If we don't perform this test, so if we don't do this, pay attention to what's gonna happen. So if I go here and hit the play button and if I launch my hook, it is gone infinitely, you see? It is gone infinitely because there is nothing that can stop it. We need to have a condition to test up to where the hook can go. So if the temporary Y position of the hook is lower or equal to the minimum Y that we have determined above here, here it is, we have determined there, if it's lower or equal to that value, move down is false now, which means this right here will not be executed anymore. We will start executing this. But then we have another problem, problem, problem. Hit the subscribe button. Anyways, let's go here. If I hit the play button and you see, you saw me commenting the other line of code out. So pay attention now we are detecting where we can go down, but we are not detecting where we can go up. So again, in infinite space, there the hook goes. I can be a writer, I mean, in infinite space, there the hook goes. This can be a plot for a movie. Anyways, temp y, if it's greater or equal to the initial y, that's why we are storing here the initial y. You see, 
transform position y, we're storing it in the initial y so that now when we start moving up, because move down is now false, which means here we will execute the code and we will start moving up, we need to get to the initial position where we were. That's why I'm testing if temp y is greater or equal to the initial y position, then can rotate is true, this will automatically do what? It will not allow us to execute this function anymore and it will start executing this function because now can rotate is true, which means the exclamation mark will make it the opposite. If it's true, it will make it false. So this right here will not get executed and the code below here will get executed. And now we will start to rotate and can rotate if it's true. If it's true, we will hit return and will not execute the code that is below. Simple as that. And we are also resetting the initial move speed. Now we are resetting it back. So move speed to the initial move speed that we have stored right here, as you can see. Now you don't see the benefit at this moment, but later when we add gold and other items, when we pick them up, we will change the move speed. So it will make sense then. So essentially this is how we can move our, our hook left or actually left. <laughs> yeah, that is rotated left and right and move it up and down when we press the button. And as I said, this also works on mobile devices. Okay, what should we do next? Well, I know we should create our rope renderer. So let's go back here in Unity. And in the meantime, you are gonna hit that smash that like button, not hit it, smash it. Anyways, on the hook parent, we have the line renderer already there. Now, how the line renderer works is that we provide the material, as you can see here, it has a material property. So we provide the material and let me clear the pencil here. And when the line renderer or the game object that holds this line renderer moves, so for example, from this position up to this position in between, the line renderer will render what we give it here in the material. material. So first let us create the material. So I'm gonna right click here and create a folder for the materials. And since we are only going to have one material, I'm going to create, I'm not going to create here a separate folder. Simply I'm going to go create and let me go here, create a material. Here it is. Now this is going to be our rope material. And for this one, I'm going to click here on this albedo, albedo, however it is pronounced. You probably know better that than me. So I'm going to click on this little circle. And again, it's this little circle. So let me just close this quickly. It's this little circle right here right here. And when you click on that, this pop up window will appear where you can select the texture that you want. Now we want this rope texture actually. So rope texture, this is the one that we want. So select it. And now go here on the hook parent and drag and drop that material right here. So simply drag it from here and to here. Voila, we got, what am I saying, man? You are good to go. Anyways, here, I'm going to click on override and hit apply. And, uh, before we try to do anything else, so before we go and create a script, I'm going to select the rope material and I'm going to go here for the shader. Instead of using the standard shader, I'm going to go under unlit and texture and use that shader. Now, of course, you can experiment with these shaders. I say that all the time. This is not the first time we are using materials and this is not me the first time saying experiment with shaders to see what kind of different effects that you can come up with. Okay, so moving forward, what is the next thing to do? Let's go here inside of our scripts folder and we have the hook scripts. I'm going to right click here and create a new C sharp script. This one is going to be called the rope renderer. It's, this word render, it's really weird to pronounce. Anyways, let me take this and attach it on the hook parent. Come on, I really hate when Unity plays with me and Probably it's time for me to change my computer. So because of that, hit that smash like the button, hit the smash like button. Anyways, let's go here. Ignore what I just said and hold here. Enter to give a little bit of space. <laughs> I just realized what I said. It's funny for me. Anyways, in the rope render, the first thing that we need is a private line render, which is the component that is attached. And I believe this is the first time we're using line renders. So don't worry about that. We will see what it is. So this is our line render that is attached and we are getting it as a reference right here. And I'm going to call it line render. So line render. 
Now below, we will need a serialized field, which is going to be a private transform property, which is going to be the start position. So position. What is this start position? It's the start position where our line is going to start. If you remember a moment ago where I explained, so we will have one point, which is for example here, and another point, which is for example here. This one is the starting point. So from where should the line render begin to draw the line? So it will begin to draw the line from here and it will go up to this right here. So let's right click on the player. So I'm going to right click on him and create an empty game object. And let me just move him on top. So above the hook parent. Uh, let me just quickly go here and open the prefab. So uh, go here, open prefab, select the player, right click and create an empty and move it here. And I'm going to call this one a line start point. And voila, let me go back. So now here it is line start point. Let me delete this game object. And for some reason, again, it's not above that. Yeah, don't care. I'm going to leave it here. It's below the hook parent. This is not important, but I'm weird. Anyways, we're going to select this line start point and let's go here in the scene. So I'm going to zoom in. So the line is approximately going to start somewhere around here. This is from where we are going to start to draw it. Let me just actually, we cannot. We cannot select an icon, I'm going to remove it because we cannot see where it is. So for the X, I'm going to say negative 0, 1, 2, 5. For the Y, negative 0, 0. 0.149. Voila. So this is basically where our line is going to start. But let me just take it actually from somewhere around here. Or actually, I'm going to leave it where it is. I don't care. I'm going to leave it there because we can change this if we don't like it. So let me go and hit apply. So this is going to be the start point that we're going to drag and drop this line start point. So drag and drop it there and go here and override all. So apply all to the player prefab. So this is the starting point where our line is going to start drawing. Okay, let's go back here. What is the next thing that we need? Well, the next thing is going to be our private float line width, which is going to be equal to 0.05 F. And we're also going to have actually we're not going to use the line height. Yeah, this is what I'm, we're not going to use the line height. We're only going to use the width height. I'm not going to touch. And basically that's that. And inside here, the awake function, we're going to say our line renderer is going to be equal to get component. And we're going to get the line render component. Simple as that. And line render, so line render dot line or start width. This is the width of the line. So how wide is it going to be? It's going to be equal to line width. So 0 0.05. And I tested it. This is how I got this number. So please don't ask me. I mean, you can ask me, but I'm going to give you the answer right here because I get questions like these when I get numbers. It's like, oh, how did you come up with 0.05? It's not a magic number. It's not something that you use and plug into every game that you create. And it's going to work. This is something I tested out. First, I tried one then I saw it did not work. Then I tried 0.5 and still it did not work until I got to the number 0.05. So this is how game development and how programming works. You test things out. If it works, leave it. If it does not work, change it. Of course, the things that you leave later on, it will come back to make it even more better. But this is essentially how things go. Now, also here below, I'm going to say line render that enabled is equal to false because we want to turn it off before we start or if we are not using the line. Uh, what does that mean? That means if I go here and if I hit the play button, you see we have our hook, which is moving left and right. It's rotating. It, at this moment, we are not using the line. Only when I press a button like this and the hook starts moving, this is when we are trying to use or when we are going to use the line. Okay, so let's go back here. I'm going to remove this and I'm going to leave the star function. And here, instead of our update, I'm going to create a public void render line. And this function is going to take parameters. So the first parameter is going to be vector three, which is the render position and also bool enable renderer. 
So this is going to be draw line. And what are we going to do inside of this function? Well, first of all, we are going to test if enable render. So if enable render, that means when we pass here true, we are going to enable it. So we are going to enable our line render and we're going to start rendering things. So we're going to test here if our line render dot enabled, but I'm going to use here an exclamation mark, which we know makes what's after it the opposite. So essentially here we're asking if the line render is not enabled because if this enabled, it will return either true or false. If it returns false, the exclamation mark will make it what's the, the opposite. And what's opposite? The opposite of false is true. So essentially here we're asking if the line render is not enabled, then we're going to say line render dot enabled is equal to true. So enable the line render. And I'm going to put it like this. So I'm going to take this here and put it here. So enable the line render. And then we're going to say line render that position count is going to be equal to two. That means we're going to have two positions in our line renderer. Okay. So here below, I'm going to say else, meaning if inside of this function, we pass false, if we pass true, this is what we are going to do. If we say here false, then we are going to do the following. We're going to say if the line render dot enabled. So if it's true, then we're going to say line render enabled is equal to false. So we are simply going to turn it off, but I'm also going to do it like this. So I'm going to put it in curly brackets. And here I'm also going to say line render dot position count is going to be equal to zero. But this one, we are going to put it above this. So first you're going to say position count is equal to zero to remove all positions. And voila, we will see and we will explain everything when we see it visually in a moment. So don't worry about that. Now below here, outside of these if else statements, we are going to test if our line render. So if the line render is enabled, meaning it is active, we can use it, it can render the lines. If that is the case, we're going to say here vector three temporary position is equal to start position dot position like this. And here we're going to say temp.z is going to be equal to zero. This is because of the rendering order so that our line render will be rendered. Don't worry about that. We will see that in a moment. So don't worry. And this, our star position. So we're going to say star position, that position is going to be equal to temp. And below we're going to say temp is equal to render position. And below we're going to say temp.z is going to be equal to zero F and render position is going to be equal to temp and below we are simply going to say line render dot set position so that zero or the position at element zero is going to be our start position dot position and line render dot set position position at index one, we're going to say a render position. Now, what is this render position? You see here, it's this one that we are passing here. I'm calling it a render position. So we have our start position and we have the end position. I'm going to say here end so that it is more clear. So I'm going to say here end, and I'm going to take this and change it end position end position and end position. So it's a little bit more clear what we are doing. So essentially we are as you can see, we are simply moving or telling the line render where should it start to draw. And where are we going to call this function? Well, first of all, we need to get this reference inside of the hook movement. And it's right here, as you can see. You see, I, I added here a comment for line render and here it is. So we have our private rope render and I named it a rope render and inside of the awake function. So let me just go here awake. We're going to say rope render is equal to get component and we're going to say rope render component. So we need to get it as a reference because it is and make sure, make sure that it is attached on the same game object. So the hook parent, if we go here, the hook movement is attached. And if you pay attention, also the rope renderer is attached there as well. So where are we going to call our rope render? Let's go back here. And I've added some comments. So if we go here, as you can see below, here it is deactivate the line render here. And here we are calling it to activate it. So here I also said, as you can see, rope render, render line temp 
and I'm passing here true. And here where we need to deactivate it, we are simply gonna say rope render dot render line and passing here temp and on here, we are gonna say false. Simple as that. Now we can also, I did not test it out if we can pass here vector three zero, which is zero zero zero. So that basically we will not render the line. We're passing here zero, so to say, and we are saying here false. But anyways, if we go back here, when we pass here false, you see, we will deactivate. So we will test here if our line render is enabled, then we will disable it. And here we are testing. So we're using precaution measures and only if the line render is enabled, we will start rendering things on the screen. So there is no harm if we even pass here 10. So yeah. Anyways, outside of here, you see outside of these if else statements, but inside of this can rotate. So select the can rotate. It all happens inside. But again, outside of those if else statements here, and this is where we are passing our temp to the rope render so that it can render it. Now, what is temp here? Well, if we go, you can see here, this is the function, if you remember, that is moving the hook down. And this is the temporary position that we are using to move the function. So we're using transform position and temp. And if it moves down, we are gonna subtract from the temporary position. If it moves up, we are gonna add to the temporary position and then simply reset it here. As you can see, transform position is equal to temp, voila. We can also use this, so we can use this transform.position because it is the same thing essentially. So uh, let's test this out. If I go back here in Unity, and let me just clear the console. Actually, I'm not gonna do that. Why am I clearing the console every single time? I don't know. Anyways, if we go now and if I press the button, we should see the line being rendered, you see? Now the line is rendered, the line is rendered, but it is rendered behind. So if I go back here, and let me go here in our gameplay, take the player, actually first take the BG, and you see? This is our line, you see when we set the BG at 2.1, you see, it is rendering stuff. And if I go here to the player and set it like this, so player, we set it at one. So his Z is at one. Let me just do it like this, turn it off and voila. Yeah, it is working. So let's try again, you see, voila, and it is working. Now, what can we do to fix this issue? Now, let me first try this with the hook or with the line render itself. So let me try here, hook parent. Let me try to set the Z axis and see if this can work. Actually, no, for some reason it cannot. Let me go here for our positions. So we have these two positions. Maybe we can change the position something like this. Let me try if this works. So trying to make this render appro appropriately. Okay, negative 10, negative 10 actually, no. Okay, for the starting position, we should set negative 10. And for the end position, we can set zero. So let's try that out. Let's go back here. And this is how I debug my stuff. So yeah, so here we have the end position and this is our temp for the start position. Temp.z, we set it here to be equal to zero. Well, I'm gonna say it's equal to negative 10. So you see our start position, we are getting it here and we're setting the Z variable, so the Z axis of the start position to negative 10. And then we are reassigning that back here inside of the start position. And for the end position, we're setting it zero. Let's try it out and see if this works. If it works, we'll come back and we will explain what is going on. So going here, trying to render, yeah, voila, it works like a charm. Now this is cool. So let's try it again, whoop. Voila. So what are we doing here? Okay, this is the code that I added that I said, we will explain it later. Essentially, you saw the problem. And I like explaining things like this. You saw it visually. The rope was rendered behind the background. It was rendered behind the player. And this is not what we want. We want it to be rendered on top of these backgrounds because if it's not rendered on top of the backgrounds, we cannot see them. We cannot see the rope, which we saw. And for that, we saw that what we need to do is set the starting position. And I went here in case you didn't saw, when you select the hook parent and when you go into the line render component, you see the line render component, you have these positions here, you see? You have the positions 
This index zero is the starting position and index one is the end position where we are going to draw the line. So the starting position had to have the Z axis set at negative one and our end position had the Z axis at zero. So again, if I hit the play button and okay, I simply launch it, voila, it's working. You see it, it's working. I don't have to explain it. You can see that for yourself. So this is the effect that we have created. And how did we do it? Simply by getting the start position and setting the Z axis of that start position to negative 10 and reassigning it back. And for the end position, we are also getting, so getting that position, storing it in the temporary variable, and then using the Z of that position, setting it to zero and assigning it back. In case you are wondering why we are using these temps, I did this in a couple of tutorials. If we try to do this, for example, if I say end, position that Z is equal to 10, this actually can work. Yeah, <laughs> this can work. But this right here, let me try it. So start position, that position that Z is equal to 10. Now this cannot work. You see, we cannot modify the value of transform position because it's not a variable. So in this case, it cannot work. But using start position, we can, well, do it like that. But hey, there is no harm in doing what I just did. Okay. So we have, well, we have our items or actually we have our rope. Everything is moving. The next thing to do is create the items so that we can have something to catch with our hook. So let's go back in the project and in the sprites and in the elements. And while I'm talking like this, I don't know. Anyways, here for the items, select them and go here and set the sprite mode to multiple. Hit apply and also smash that like button and go here in the sprite editor. So what I'm going to do is click on slice and slice and voila. Now I'm not going to use this or this. I'm going to use this stone. So this is going to be our large stone. This is going to be our middle stone. This is going to be small gold, so small gold. This is going to be diamond one. Now let me just reassign this, the slashing here, the, the slicing, I'm saying slashing. So slicing, let me assign it back something like this, voila. So this is going to be our diamond one. And this one is going to be our middle gold. So middle gold. I'm not going to use the cash as well. And this is going to be our diamond two. So diamond two. And this one is going to be our large gold. So large gold. And these are the items that we're going to have in the game. I'm going to hit apply. Of course you can have, or you will have your own assignment, what to do. So yeah. It's going to be cool. Anyways, what I'm going to do is take the diamond, put it here. First of all, I'm going to create an empty game object and this is going to be our item holder. And I'm going to set or reset the values for X, Y, and Z. Set the diamond one here. So we have the diamond two. We have the large gold, large stone, simply drag and drop all of these middle gold, middle stone, and the small gold. Of course, we don't see all of these. We will see in a second why. So simply put them here as a child or as children of the item holder. Now select all of them. Select diamond one, two, large gold, everyone, and go here in order in layer and set the order to three and voila, you now see them. So let's select the middle gold. So let's go here, middle gold, what we are going to do with it? Well, first of all, I'm going to attach a circle collider on it. So circle collider 2D. I'm going to set the radius at 2 point or 0 0.25, excuse me. And I'm going to set the position. So let's set it at negative 3. I don't know, 3.55. Actually, 3.55. And Y is going to be negative 3.03. .03. So this is where our middle goal is going to be located. So the next one is going to be our small gold. So select the small gold. Here it is. We are going to attach a circle collider on it. So circle, circle. What am I typing here? Circle collider and the radius is going to be 0 0.1. By the way, set it to be a trigger. Do the same thing for the middle or actually the middle gold. Set them to be triggers. And this one, so we are going to set it at negative 1.43 and the Y is going to be negative 2.6. So this is where our small gold is going to be, but it's very small. So what I'm going to do is let's say 2, 2. And for the middle one, I'm going to say 1.5 or actually 2, 2. 
actually I took the middle stone, so middle gold. So here and here, voila, and it's quite large. So let's say 1.3, 1.3, 1 1.3, okay? So this is our middle, it can be even 0 0.5. Yeah, this one is our middle, so set the scale for the middle gold to 1.5 and the small gold at 2 because it's very small, so yeah, we need to change it. Select the large gold, so here it is, large gold. Again, attach a circle collider to the... For the radius, we're going to say 0.35. For the position, I'm going to say negative 5. And for the y-axis, negative 2 point, let's say 65. And of course, resize it because it is small in comparison to the middle one. So this is going to be our large gold. So the next thing is our large stone selected. And for the large stone, add the circle collider. And I'm going to set the radius at, or actually this is going to be a polygon collider, excuse me. So let me take the large stone. Let me see what it is. Game, take the large stone. This is our larger stone, okay? Here it is, and for this one, we're not gonna attach a circle collider. Instead, we're gonna attach a polygon collider. So type here for polygon collider 2D. Now, what is a polygon collider? Well, as you can see, we can, how to say that, we can create that collider to have the same shape as the game object. Because if we attach a circle or a box collider, so pay attention here, if I attach a circle collider, you see how it looks like. It's not realistic. If we touch with the hook here, you see, if we touch with the hook here at this part, we will, it will count as we touch the stone, but that's not the case. And if I take here, so if I go and take the box collider 2D, again, we have some empty spaces and uh, that's not what we want. Instead, what we want is this. We're gonna say Polygon Collider 2D. And now in the Polygon Collider, you will see these buttons. Let me clear it. You see here, this button that says Edit Collider, this one right here. Now, when we click on that, it will allow us to edit this collider. And you will see these lines where we can, or actually these dots, when we are at the specific edge of the collider. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this like this, so here, and move this here, and this I'm gonna move here, something like this. Y you see my point? We can shape it to look the same as the game object, and you can click anywhere on these, let me just here hold, I'm holding Command, which I assume can be Control on Windows, so you can delete, you see, you can delete these dots or pinpoints. So what I'm gonna do is take it like this. Yeah, this is cool. I'm gonna set it to be is trigger and voila, this is going to be our large stone. Now, since I said it's gonna be large and, and you can see the middle stone is larger than the large stone, instead what I'm gonna do, change their name. So let me select this one, come on, man. So this is gonna be the middle stone and this is going to be the large stone. So here we are for the large stone, I'm gonna say circle collider and attach the circle collider. And let's resize it. So let me zoom in here and just resize it a little bit. Something like this can do. Yeah, but we can also add a polygon collider for the large stone. This is your assignment. So this is what I want you to do. Now for the, first of all, let me just take the middle stone and I'm going to position it. So one and negative, so one and negative 2.77. This is where the position is going to be. And for this one, so the middle or actually the large stone now, I'm going to position 4.15 and negative 2.8, something like this. Select the diamond one now. So here they are, select them and this is our diamond. I'm gonna resize it a little bit, so let's say 2.2, actually 2 is too much, so let's say 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And we are gonna attach a box collider on it. So yeah, a box collider, it can do like this. And I'm going to position it at 2.2 for the X and for the Y, negative 2.33. And taking here our diamond two, also attaching a box collider on it. And for this dude, I'm gonna say 2.2 .2 and, or actually not 2.2, .2, but 5.3, 5.3 and negative 1.62. So these are our items. Now, of course, you can rearrange things however you want to arrange them. I'm not going to go into that because what we are going to do is we are going to detect collision between these game objects. So that is the most important part. And then you can 
put the lever to the level together however you want to put it so you can add more obstacles here in terms of these stones in terms of even these other items such as this barrel with this skull on it or the bone or this bag with a question mark with the cash or whatever you can do after we detect collision now the first thing that i'm going to do is go here in the assets and scripts and i'm going to right click here and create a folder for helper scripts we will need all tags to detect collision so we can well might as well get it done right now so it's going to be our tag 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 manager and i'm going to double click it and open it here in visual studio and what i'm going to do is so we're going to have here a public class tags where we are going to store our tags so let me just hold enter to give a little bit of space and type out the tag that we are gonna need. So we're gonna have a public constant string. There's gonna be large underscore gold, which is gonna be equal to large gold like this. Now I'll duplicate it, paste it, paste it one more time, paste it one more time and two more times. So this one is gonna be our middle gold. So change here, large to middle. And this one is gonna be small. So small gold and change large to small. This right here is going to be deliver item. And here I'm still gonna say deliver item. This one is gonna be large stone instead of gold. So here change gold to stone. And here we're gonna say middle. So middle underscore stone and middle stone. Voila, so these are going to be our tags. We're also gonna have here public class, not class, class animation tags. And here we're simply gonna see public constant string idle animation, which is gonna be equal to idle. And we're gonna have public constant string. And this one is going to be rope wrap animation. And I forgot the name of this animation. So let me go here and select the player. So select the player and go here into the animator tab and rope wrap, here it is. So rope wrap, let's go back and simply paste it right here. Now, as you can assume, what we need to do as well is add all of these tags. So let's go here in Unity and quickly add all of these tags. Then we can tag our items. So add tag, click on plus button, save. Do the same for the middle, click plus, save, do the same for the small, you get the drill. Deliver item. So let's go here, large stone and the middle stone. Voila. So now select all of these here. And by the way, for our diamonds, I'm also going to tag the diamonds with the large gold tag. So diamonds and large gold, tag them with the large gold tag. Middle stone, tag it with the middle stone. You get the drill. So middle gold, large stone, here it is, and small gold, small gold. And make sure that everything is tagged correctly or ta tagged, tagged. Why, why am I mispronouncing things? And in the prefabs folder, I'm gonna create here item prefabs folder and drag and drop every single item. So we're gonna have our diamond, we're gonna have diamond two. Don't drag and drop this parent holding all of these items. Instead, drag these items one by one. So that of course, later on, you can, you know, instantiate them and stuff. Anyways, before we proceed to script things, what we are gonna do, for example, let me take the small gold, I'm gonna duplicate it and move it here. So when we, catch it with our hook. This is how it's gonna look like. We're gonna catch it like this, as you can see, and then we're gonna simulate like we are dragging it. Now, in order for that to happen, we need to make sure that when we collide with one of these game objects, so when the hook collides with one of these game objects, we need to make sure that that game object stays where the hook is. And in order to do that, we're gonna right click on the hook itself and create an empty game object. And this one is gonna be item holder, which is gonna hold these items. And we're going to set it 
So x is going to be negative 0.009 and the y is going to be negative 0.224. So this is where we are going to store these items. And I'm also going to take the player and go here and apply also so that these changes apply to the prefab. Again, this item holder set the x position. Of course, first make it the child of the hook. So it's really important to make it the child of the hook. Set the x position of it to negative 0.009 and negative 0.224. This is for the y axis. Now, excuse me here if I may just take my fans here. And this is what I do because of you guys. I'm risking my computer. So I need to set these fans right here at 4,370, around that. Well, let me just move it a little bit here so that you don't hear my fans in the background when I'm talking about what I'm talking about. When I'm talking, this is what I do for you. So appreciate these tutorials. Thank you. Smash like and hit the subscribe button.